farm is just under 3,000 hectares in size. I'm the third generation farmer in the, in the lower southeast for our family. Feels good to know that Dad's built up our business from when I was a, a young child to, to now that I'm starting to run our business and to see the growth there and, and hopefully that'll keep progressing for the future. We farm in the lower southeast, which is a Mediterranean climate, so we have cool wet winters and hot dry summers. The majority of our rainfall falls in the winter and spring. It's very much a good sort of area for growing a lot of grass for our animals and the crops that we can sort of harvest in the summer. Because we're in a high rainfall zone area, it gives the ability for our business to diversify across a number of different commodities that we grow. We're very much a mixed farm. We're farming sheep, cattle and also involved in cropping as well, so very a diverse operation. A lot of the products and commodities we grow on our farm here end up in all other parts of the world. You know, we can have beef end up in, in Europe and we can have pulse crops, the broad beans end up in China you know, or other Asian countries. Very much what we grow in our little part of Australia here can end up in all different parts of the world. We try and run our farm as a system. Everything works together, so we'll generally put our crops on our better soil, so a heavy black country will get get the crops on it because that's where it'll be the most productive country. Some of our land also has trees on it as well, so that the timbered country will provide shelter for the livestock, so they generally is where our livestock are run on timbered areas. When our family first took up this land here, I and mean, when it was settled post Second World War, a lot of land clearing happened. And I think that was, that was good because it opened up this country and allowed us to farm it far more efficiently. But also as well with that, we've obviously planted a lot of trees as well to sort of put back in, into the environment what we have taken out. So, but we're strategically planting trees along fence lines and as also as shelter belts for our animals. For us, the Angus cattle is a great breed. It does well in our environment and it, it's a breed that the consumer wants. So we run Angus cattle in operation and, and we find that they're, they're really profitable. We run a first cross ewe flock, turning off a second cross lamb. We go for that breed and that type because that gives us the best growth rates in the animal to then be able to get them from birth to a slaughter weight as soon as possible. The wool is a great byproduct for our meat production. We'll traditionally shear in the springtime and then a lot of that wool will be used for various products. So some of the broader wool will be used in carpets and then some of that finer wool will be used in various clothing and also in bedding products as well. The majority of our broadacre dryland crops are planted in the autumn and harvested in the following summer. Wheat and broad beans are our two big crops and then we substitute barley and canola and we've also got some irrigation. Um, some of our irrigated crops are irrigated carrot seed, which you can see in the background. We're really irrigating these crops now to, to keep a soil moisture profile that's nice and full, so these crops can actively grow and flower during the, the summer. We have two full-time staff on the farm. We're very proactive in employing younger people on our farm. I think they display a lot of enthusiasm for the job and the willingness to learn as well and to adopt the new technologies that are available. Also have you know some younger people that are doing a school-based apprenticeship out here as well. So I think it's great to make that linkage with what we're doing on farm here with what people are learning in the classrooms. Something that I've always been taught and I think it's a great thing to do is you always want to leave that land in better condition than when you took it over. So we're always using you know modern you know, farming methods to make sure that the land is always improving. All of our tractors and harvesters and other machines have all got GPS technology and the main thing we're using for that is the auto steering capabilities where that just gives that tractor, it takes the issue of the operator having to steer that driving down a paddock out and it just makes, gives us greater efficiencies. The technology is advancing so quickly nowadays that we have to be up to speed with what's available technology wise whether it be in yield mapping with harvesting equipment or auto section control with boom sprays. And now even our irrigators have got GPS on them and now we're monitoring them remotely via iPads to know where they are and how they're going. I think sustainability is, is a crucial part of this business. It's what will allow us to farm into the future and it won't only allow my generation to farm profitably, but it'll also allow future generations to farm profitably.